When inflation picks up around the world, it inevitably becomes top of mind for investors. Inflation takes place when an imbalance in supply and demand for goods and services occurs within economies. This imbalance can come from changes in supply factors or demand factors, or even both. Investors tend to be particularly mindful of inflation because of the challenges it can bring to market conditions. Specifically, it can potentially lead to rising costs and lower profits for businesses, and a fall in purchasing power for consumers, which can all impact market prices. Let's dive into inflation and decipher some key types that occur and what that may mean for investors. Demand pull inflation and cost push inflation are two common ones. Demand pull occurs when demand grows at a rate that outpaces what can be supplied. This environment often surfaces when the economy is performing very well, which may indicate rising incomes for consumers, leading to higher spending by households, and then ultimately, higher prices if supply cannot keep up. Now, it depends on the level of inflation, but historically, environments that see hot demand have been met with interest rate hikes by central banks. But some investors see interest rate hikes as a bearish signal for stocks, given it can lead to less spending and less profits while making other assets more attractive to investors. But there's data going back over 50 years that give us some interesting insight. Let's take a look at this chart that shows the history of rising interest rates in the US since 1970. The data shows that while rate hikes may hamper stock market momentum on average, rate hike environments may have been met with positive returns 66% of the time, with average returns of 3.5%. Next, we have cost push inflation, where impacts on the costs or inputs of a business push prices higher. Keep in mind that this form of inflation does not come from demand or purchasing, but rather supply factors. For example, cost push inflation can occur when wages or raw materials like wheat and energy rise in price. Historically, this environment is much trickier to navigate by central banks because supply factors are not as easily influenced by monetary policy action, so interest rate hikes are less effective. This can lead to lower profits for some companies who struggle to control key costs associated with their business, which can cause their stocks to underperform. Next, we have shrinkflation, which is not a type of inflation in and of itself, but a response businesses commonly have towards inflation. Shrinkflation occurs when businesses respond to inflation by shrinking or reducing the size or quantity of their products. The rationale behind doing this is to reduce the size and therefore the cost of items, rather than increasing prices. In most cases, businesses do this because consumers respond better to a slightly smaller or shorter lifespan of a product compared to a rise in prices for the same size good. Examples of shrinkflation could be a bag of potato chips with a few less chips and more air in the bag, or laundry detergent with less milliliters in a container. Like other inflationary environments, shrinkflation presents challenges because the prices of items don't change, yet businesses aim to maintain profitability by reducing input costs. Last, we have stagflation, which is a unique economic environment where inflation is coupled with poor economic growth and or higher unemployment. This is in contrast to inflationary environments where both demand and the economy are doing well. How have investment portfolios fared during stagflation? Let's look at this chart showing balanced portfolios during the 70s and 80s, which was a prominent era for stagflation. The black line shows nominal returns from a balanced portfolio, which doubled during this period. However, the red line indicating the real rates of return which is returns that subtract inflation, has been impacted historically during periods of stagflation. Ultimately, the data suggests while the various types of inflation can impact real rates of return, inflationary environments can still potentially be met with a rising market. And there you have it, some key types of inflation that can occur. To learn more, we encourage you to check out our large library of content covering various investing topics.